Guys, I uh, just want to talk about another topic. This was brought up by Ventition M M Tau. Um, now, the first uh, Ventition, the, I think that's actually, does that mean to come in Latin? Yeah, anyway, it's from Ventus, I think. Um, but anyway, the point we're talking about, um, which he brought up, was the fact of like crypto is not something the states can actually take in court. In some places, they've actually started changing that. Japan's a prime example where they've seized Bitcoin during raids for criminal activity. They've seized the car, the house, the drugs or whatever, but not the Bitcoin because they didn't recognize Bitcoin as having any value because part of the problem that governments are having is they don't want crypto. Um, <laughs> They're saying they want to embrace it, at the same time, don't know how to control it, so they don't want it. So they've got this conflict of interest. Um, and this is why it's quite a funny thing, because they can go, well, we're seizing this, but if we have to seize that, we have to admit it actually exists and has a, a value. If it has a value, it then redefines of what it exists in the financial markets. So it confuses things, and that's why they sort of try and ignore it. Now, the example he gave was a Canadian guy um, where his wife wanted to go and have um, liaisons with other men, and that was the reason for a divorce, and the Canadian system actually supported that so she could get the house and whatever. And the thing he couldn't get was his Bitcoin, and quite simply just got on a plane and went to Chile. I will say I actually know this example from other reasons as well. Um, a friend of mine had this similar issue with his ex-wife, um, he was a computer programmer. His wife basically destroyed his business because she wanted, I mean, I know her allowance for looking after the children's $5,000 a month. And the point being is, a lot of time, these people are set in a way of life where, okay, they're looking after the kids. I get it. But there's nothing to say they don't have to work. You know, at the end of the day, if you separate with somebody, and I know there's people that do this, because I, I see it in the social system, where they know they're getting pushed to work, so they decide to have another kid. Because then they go, well, I can't work, I've got a child. This is why the old part-time job thing becomes such a big thing in the UK. But a lot of people were breeding kids to simply not work. Um, but the point is, there must be a level where you simply say, that is not for the benefit of the children. That's the, for the benefit of you. Because um, at the end of the day, as long as the state offloads its responsibilities to you in the sense that your ex-partner is not your responsibility, it's your ex-partner. But the state does not want them back either. So it says, you're responsible, we'll push everything, we'll give them the house, give them the car, give them, the, give them a monthly allowance, etc. And make it your burden. This is, I mean, I find some of this stuff really bizarre because even people that have separated uh, for being married still have to give an allowance to the ex wife, even if they've got kids. I've seen that happen. And I'm not sure how often that happens, but it does seem a few people, like America, I think it's quite common. Um, but I do not understand why an adult needs to be funded from another adult if there's no connection between them besides that they were once a couple um now <laughs> i just thought of something actually a friend of mine he um, he's, he comes from quite a wealthy family his father died and his son was his mother was trying to sue him for the allowance that the father would normally have paid to her because they her her and him the, the his parents had separated a long time ago and the father used to send her an allowance on a regular basis. But because he died, the son had inherited everything because he didn't want anything with the ex-wife. So she was trying to sue him as the son to get her allowance because she thought she was entitled to it because quite simply, she well, she had lived the last 30 years of not paying her way. And she quite rightly should deserve free money for the rest of her life. Um, but yeah, that... This is the hypocrisy of things. So I'm not going to focus on that too much, but I can understand why people are moving stuff into crypto. Because if you have bank savings, 
50-50. Um, a relative of mine worked at a very famous power plant, a nuclear power plant in the UK. Half his pension goes to his ex-wife. His ex-wife, where he come home one night and she decided she didn't want to live there anymore and she'd left. She'd gone back to her mother's. Um, and he had no idea what, she, what even the problem was because she didn't even talk to him. She just left. And she also took the brand new car that he was left paying all the payments on because she, she took the car, um, wasn't even paid yet. It was brand spanky new. So he was left to pay that off. She got half the house, um, but lucky enough, thanks to greed, she got half the house, but later on, the house market then boomed and then he sold the house for profit. But the whole point is, why is this making any sense? They've got no kids. She didn't put in half to the half the money into everything. She not even near. If anything, she's a, she was a bit bloody scatty. Um, I can say that about relatives, but but anyway, let's go back to some of the issues. But if you have things in crypto, they can't be touched because they they have to recognise it as an asset. And a lot of time they won't recognize it an asset. But on top of that, they don't know where it is. If you have it on what like a trezor, uh, which is about the size of this, which is a bit, bit, bit it looks like a USB stick. Um, you can put your Bitcoin on there. And basically, that's it. This is it. It's here. It's not in the banking system. And I did mention about tracing things can be done. But it'd have to know they exist in the first place. Nobody knows it's there. Then there's no way they can trace it. No way they can chase it. Um, and as somebody said already about they kept their safe in a vault somewhere. Well, that's that's why some Bitcoin's missing. It's those examples where somebody may have passed away or whatever. And they've got Bitcoin sat somewhere that will never be seen again. But... The point being is keeping your own money secure in a way from the centralized system. It's perfect. That's why crypto has many uses. And I know some people say, well, what about money laundering? What about money laundering? I'll talk to you about HSBC. HSBC designed something very similar to this to allow the Colombians to transfer their money from Mexican banks into the US, they could walk into HSBC with one of these and transfer their money. Now, I don't remember any of them going to jail when that is actually designed for money laundering and actually involved in the drug trade and human trafficking and everything else. Do you remember any of HSBC being arrested for that? I do remember HSBC being asked how much they wanted to be fined. <laughs> where you would probably be in jail for at least 10 years for doing something very similar. Um, but the point being is, that's why I'm anti-central bank. I am anti it. I am pro-business. I'm pro-development um, of the, the world in many ways. I do find that these trivialities that are caused by central banks that are bean counting, have caused a lot of things to go backwards in time. I'd rather we focused on space exploration and other things, technology, than these sort of things. But the ultimate problem here is that these corporations and banks control too much. Um, and a lot of that needs to be put back in check. And crypto offers a way to do that. And as I was saying here about the relationship to finances, digital numbers on, a, on something like this, you can transfer it, you can sell it. Um, it removes the banking. Why do you think they want to rid of fiat? You know, at the end of the day, they cannot produce the amount of notes that are required for the amount of money people have in numbers on the computer screen. They've only got the amount of money they say you have, they just put another number on the screen, another zero, that's it. Everyone's happy. It's not connected to anything anymore. It's not it, the value of gold. It's not the value of even the economy. There is no real value to it. It's just made up completely. And the whole system is based on trust. And this is why it's quite funny when you see them trying to justify crypto being a bad thing 
when it has limited supply, etc., etc. At the same time, try not to highlight the fact of their own flaws. Um, now, crypto isn't going away. SEC and many other organizations recognize that. They also recognize it's going to be near impossible to control because of the way things move around. Um, you know, blockchain technology, but I'll, I'll cover blockchain on another video. Um, but the point being is they know they can't control it beyond what they could do, which is actually create crashes in the market until it eventually um, shut down completely. But that is not going to happen. Like anything, if you look at um, the fuel spill in the Bay of Mexico, um, shares went down. But guess what? They didn't stay down. Eventually, you get a recovery. And that's the thing they realize is it's not even possible to control. But a lot of the stuff being done is not purely money oriented. A lot of it's ethics, cultural, technology, interest, and not purely money. As such, it becomes harder to control it because there's people outside of their own niche. Their niche is money. We'll give you half a percent a year if you're lucky, at the same time making 10% on your money or more. That's the banking. For any Premier Bank account holders, you'll know the difference with HSBC. You'll know the difference between what you get and what other people get in the same way um, one of my friends, when he's coming back to the UK from Dubai, he, he wanted to buy a house. Now, the advice he got directly from some, his advisor was quite simple. Get a mortgage on it. He's got the money in cash. It, but at the same time, he took the the money. <clears throat> this is the his financial advisor, because it was the house was £350,000. Um, but the, the advisor says, don't use it on the house, take it here, invest it in this, this and this, get a mortgage, the mortgage will be paid from the interest on these, plus you'll make a profit as well on a X amount. A lot of people don't get that advice. I know when my father, I told my father to go and speak to a financial advisor directly in the bank, and it took him two weeks to even get an appointment. Now bear in mind, my father has a lump sum of cash. Um, I'm not going to say how much or what for, but the point being is even with a certain amount, you sometimes have to ask for it. Within RBS banking, there are several other banks that you cannot be a customer with unless you have a certain amount of money. Yeah, for one of them, you have to have over half a million pounds liquid not in investments, not in loans, half a million to put into their account and they will trade it for you. Now, there's another bank that's in the same street, owned by RBS, at the next level. You go there, it's Silver Service, I have no idea who their customers are. Um, there is whining and dining, <clears throat> so there's suites for them, not offices, there's suites for them. Um, to get the, those people to bank with RBS. Now, bear in mind, these are sit inside RBS, which is, I think it's still a state-owned bank. But I do wonder if these entities are still owned by RBS because they're very, very profitable. These are these would be the equivalent of the Barclay boys where you've got 12 people that basically made most of the money for Barclays. And then they said, oh, it's all wrong. They're beating the system. It's unfair. Um, but anyway, going off the tangent. Crypto is here to stay anyway. It's not going to disappear. The limited supply of Bitcoin is, for me right now, is going to see Bitcoin go up in price. One of the things I would say, if you invest in anything, do not invest on speculation. Invest out of interest, out of seeing something longer term, out of something that intrinsically will be of value to you in more than one way, not just financial. But I do understand, um, relating to the comment made, relating to people keep money separate for security or as a saving, because savings is another thing. Because um, even here, you've got 
Carrefour supermarkets, you can actually buy Bitcoin in Carrefour supermarkets um, as a saving mechanism. If you go to the bank, you are not getting anything. But it's worse than that, you're getting less than anything. Because although, although this is a bit people don't even, they may only give you like 0.1% interest or 05 but in reality, inflation's rising above that anyway. So you're actually devalued every single year you're with a bank. Now, somebody said about markets being speculative. Now, let's have a look at Halbiz. Halbiz is something, it's a bit of a strange business entity, but I just want to talk about it. Halbiz, I got for $2,000. And you can go and look this up on the markets yourself, don't believe me. I've got 116,000 of these. So I got $2,000 worth a couple of days ago, on Friday, I think it was. Um, they've gone to the market. Let me get this to pop up, because gone to the market. It went down to 1,400, and I was tempted to think, oh my, I bought, bought a duff deal here. But instead I said, you know what, market's all in the red happens at the weekends leave it till monday that two thousand dollars now worth four thousand and twenty six dollars um i'm sitting here and we'll see where it is tomorrow if that goes over six thousand dollars i will sell it now one of the things somebody was saying that relating to it being a scam in crypto etc here's a little bit of news for you i can sell that crypto over the next couple of days, walk away with two or three thousand dollars profit and take it from there to Coinbase and transact it back to my bank account for 15 cents. It's not a scam, is it? At the end of the day, it's, it's profit. It's how you play the markets, it's how you make money. Um, and the other thing I could do with that is simply take the 2000 put it in Bitcoin, keep hold of half of my investment, and I've got exactly what I put in, in Hellbiz still, and I've took $2,000 out, which is a sensible way to trade. Um, but I just wanted to point out, where people say it's a scam, it's this, it's that, I only start with $400. Today, I'm, I mean, I've got some that are down today because like I said the market's still quite low from the weekend, but I'm sitting on $32,500 today. I took out $700 yesterday for bills. I've bought the car outside in cash. I paid for the house for the last seven or eight months, and we have a good lifestyle. Um, We've eaten out five times this week, let's put it that way. Our kids have all the extra things, the extra curriculum classes and tuition. My son does robotics and stuff like that. Um, we pretty much just buy what we like. So when people turn around and say crypto is this or crypto is that, I'll tell you what, maybe it's worth having a real look at it, investing a bit of time in it because if you don't want to invest it, that's fine. Don't. I'm not telling you to invest in it. And I've spoken to a couple of people about this when I started. Because so, I, I was saying, you know, this is bugging me, by the way. I was telling people, go and have a look at it. And they go, well, it's a scam. I've heard it's a scam. I'm like, fine. But don't tell me later on when I've got to where I want to be that I never told you about it, which was the important bit. Because the whole point is, People ask me, how do you make money? Well, some of it is in this. Other things will be like the, we've got this power plant convention. Well, it's not, it's, it's, it's in Latin America. We've got this big appointment coming up. If we get the sales on this, let's put it this way, I'll be moving to the next level. Um, it's, it's quite an important meeting for me and my team. Because one of the things I do want to mention here is the power plant is not me. I'm one of about eight people that are involved in this. It was me that put the team together. And I've got several key, key people that, well, for example, Alan introduced me to the power plant technology. And then I've looked at it and thought, we could do this. And then I've started to put the, the jigsaw together. And we've got different people from all around the globe. The point being is, 
this is a business that is going to work. And this is what I find funny when people go, oh, it's, uh, I don't want to invest in this. I don't want to, you know, I don't mind. The funny thing is with the power plants, I haven't had anybody say not invest, asking how to invest. But when I talk about crypto, a lot of time it's because people don't understand it. I mean, a lot of people do not understand Alan Turing and the bits and pieces related to Turing and crypto. Myself, I used to work at the Turing building um, back in the MOD days, Ministry of Defense. Um, Alan Turing is what you would probably call, if you're Philippines, one of my idols. I come from computer technology. I had my first computer when I was six years old. I was already programming back then because back then there was no, um, there was no desk, definitely no desktop publishing. But even for doing a printout, you had to write the code and put the spaces in manually. You'd be like print, it's written in basic. So the point being is at six years old, I was already hooked on computers. But at the same time, Alan Turing, if you look into the things that that guy was already developing, understood in the evolution of mathematics, which I would say is, is, he would have been one of the best people on the planet. He is one of the best in the sense that if you look at um, the first programmable computer and Alan Turing and the Bletchley Park things, you'll see how intelligent the guy was understanding the formulation of mathematics and how that equates into um, DNA, plants and everything else was Alan Turing. Artificial intelligence, he understood where it would be. Alan Turing was already on that path, but eventually committed suicide. Um, but the point being, there is some great people out there. And I do want to see some movement away from centralized systems, centralized banks. Why should Microsoft get all the best talent? Why should everything go to the Silicon Valley? Why should they all be swallowed up by large corporations that often don't even let them reach their f full potential? Okay, Alan Turing's a bad example in that sense because he did go to one of the universities. I think it was university. Yeah, anyway. Um, but he was working for the Ministry of Defense up to a point. Um, yeah, which helped him commit suicide. But anyway, um, that's why I like crypto. Crypto is striving to move in its own direction. And I'll add something with the Kaiser report, just so you can actually do a bit of a comparison of what they're talking about relating to a lot of stuff I'm talking about myself. Um, myself, I see crypto as the next evolution in banking and government. Um, there is other projects out there which are more open to governance, um, but I can't think of the name off the top of my head. But the whole point is they're all moving on to the crypto space because it's a deregulated environment. Not everything needs regulated. Not everything needs regulated. Sometimes you need guidelines. Sometimes you need some um, direction, but at the same time, please be aware that anybody who writes this stuff is often doing it nearly always for their own benefit. If you allow the central banking to design the crypto space, I tell you now, the first thing is, there will be like stock trading. They'll limit your access to it. Because that's another important thing. Anybody can trade in crypto. Anybody. You've only just got to open an account, transfer some money in, and you're trading. Nobody's going to go, oh, well, you can't trade here. You haven't got $1,000. Or, sorry, that's wrong. You haven't got $300,000 because they want to keep control of it. They'll let you trade because it's up to you. Thanks for watching.